Hi, my name is Brendan, and I'm a radio and podcast producer, editor, sound designer, engineer. And uh, I'm here today to talk about Reaper Reattooled, which is a Reaper configuration that I've made. Um, so a Reaper configuration is basically a way to change a bunch of settings and options and preferences in Reaper all at the same time. And by doing this, you can really change the look, feel, and performance of Reaper. And one of the reasons that I'm putting this together is because when I first started using Reaper over 10 years ago, um, right out of the box by its default settings, I found that it wasn't quite as intuitive as I expected it to be, particularly as someone who was used to using Pro Tools and other DAWs. So what I'd like to do is just walk through the installation with you. Um, I'm going to be installing on a Mac. The installation on a PC is a little bit more straightforward than installing on a Mac, so I'm going to be demonstrating on a Mac here. Um, and uh, I've put all the instructions here on my website. So the address is brendanpatrickbaker.com slash reatooled. That's R-E-A-T-O-O-L-E-D. And um, so if you just scroll down to the installation instructions, let's walk through this together. So the first step, um, I'm a Mac user, and so I'm gonna go down to the Mac users, and uh, the first step is to install Reaper. So I'm gonna to go to reaper.fm, and up here where it says download Reaper, I'm gonna click that, and then I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna get the Mac 10.15 plus version, which is a universal build for both M1, M2, and uh, Intel Macs. So I'm gonna let that download, and I'm gonna to go to my downloads directory, open it up, and I'll get this little user agreement. I hit agree. It will verify the DMG. And the DMG will open now. And the installation at this step is uh, really easy. You just drag and drop Reaper, the application, into your applications folder. OK, so I've installed Reaper into my applications folder. Now, the next step is to install the SWS extension. And the SWS extension is sort of an add-on to Reaper. It's uh, developed by a different group of people. And um, here's their website. But I have a link to the files that you need directly on my instructions. And if you're on a PC, this is relatively simple. Uh, you just download this exe file, and then you run it. You use all the default settings, and it should just work. Um, on the Mac, it's a little bit more complicated. So we're going to do that all together. And so if you're on a Mac, just follow with me step by step, and we'll walk you through the whole process. So the first thing that I need to do is to go into my Applications folder and launch Reaper for the first time. So the reason that you have to launch it first is the first time you launch Reaper, it installs a bunch of uh, folders in the background of your system. So it's going to ask me if I want to open this because it's an app that I downloaded on the internet, say open. And now it's installing those files in the background. And then it's also going to run through your VST plugins. I'm going to cancel that right now because um, I don't want to take all the time um, to load all my VST plugins. But uh, if you have VST plugins, you can just let them load. OK, next, Reaper is going to ask me to select an audio device. Would I like to select my audio device driver now? I'm just going to say yes, and uh, I'm going to use the default options here. So this is what Reaper is going to look like when you first install it. Um, a couple things to note, uh, the transport is down here, the mixer is down here, and um, in a minute when we install the SWS extension, we're going to be adding something up here on our menu bar that'll say extensions. Okay. So I'm just going to keep Reaper running in the background for now and go on to the next step. So after that, um, we're going to go to your Apple and about this Mac. And the reason I'm doing this is you might have an Intel computer or you might have a M1 or M2 computer. And if you're unsure, this is how you check. So you can see right up here, it says processor. I have an Intel Core i9. Um, depending on your operating system, this window might look a little bit different, but um, it should tell you if you have an Apple M1 or an Apple M2 or an Intel processor. Uh, if you have an M1 or M2, you download this link right here, 
And if you have an Intel Mac, you get this version. So I have an Intel Mac, and this is the version that I'm gonna download. Okay. So the next step is to open the DMG that I just downloaded, the SWS DMG. I'm gonna do that. Hit agree. And here's where it gets a little weird. So you think that you would just do something similar, like drag and drop this onto that. And that's what the directions seem to suggest that you ought to do. But I'm telling you now that that's not going to work. This is a longstanding bug that the SWS developers haven't fixed yet. So instead, what I've done is I have written a little application that is going to do this for us. So uh, here's a link to an app that's uh, install SWS extension. And here is the install SWS extension zip. I'm going to double click it to unzip it. And here is the install SWS extension application. Now the application requires you to have the SWS DMG already open on your system. Um, if it's not loaded on your desktop, this application won't work. So the next step is to hold down control on your keyboard and then click the application. You don't want to just double click the application without holding control. If you do, you're going to get a pop up basically saying that Apple can't assure that this isn't from a malicious developer and it won't let you open it. So you've got to hold down control on your keyboard and then click. And then right here on the drop down menu, you can select open. You might get a pop up like this saying um, that this was downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? You can say open. And you might also get another pop-up at this point saying, um, we can't prove that this is not a malicious application. Are you sure you want to open it? And then you click open again. So the application runs. And then you should get a little pop-up here saying the SWS extension has been installed to Reaper's default user plugins folder. And then you can say, OK. And now we should be good to go. Um, if you want to double check to make sure that SWS has been installed correctly, what you can do is quit Reaper and relaunch it. So I'm going to go to Applications, Open Reaper again. And now you can see in my menu bar, File, Edit, View, Insert, Item, Track, Options, Actions, Extensions. So this didn't exist before. So if you can see Extensions in your menu bar, you know that you've installed SWS correctly. OK. So now we can go on to installing the RIA tooled configuration. OK, so the first step to installing RIA tooled is you have to download the RIA tooled Reaper configuration here. OK, so when you download this file, um, don't try to double click it or install it or unzip it or anything like that. You actually need to have Reaper open like this and then drag and drop the file directly into Reaper like that. And then you'll get this pop up saying import configuration say OK. And then you'll get an import configuration dialog box like this with a bunch of check marks. Just leave everything as it is and click import. And this will take a little while. This is copying all the files that I've modified or added to make the RIA tooled configuration. And it's going to install those into the background of your system. Then Reaper's going to reload. Um, it's going to rescan for any VST plugins if you have them. So just let that run. Okay, still evaluating. And now Reaper should look somewhat different. So the way that you know that you've installed the RIA tooled configuration correctly is that you can see the transport is now up at the top of the window. And you've got some columns on the side. This is the track manager, the group manager and the media items bay on the side. Um, and that's the sign that you've installed RIA tooled correctly. OK, so now that you have Reaper installed with the RIA tooled configuration, you can get started adding tracks. You can drag and drop audio into Reaper and start editing um, using Pro Tools key commands, basically. Um, I'm going to be doing a series of videos talking about how I edit and how I use key commands in Reaper and some of the workflow improvements that I've developed over the years. Um, but before I leave today, I want to point out one other thing, which is under the file menu and project templates, we have Brendan Baker's radio and podcast template. 
And this is basically a set of presets. So I have different colored tracks for different types of podcast material. And on each track, there are preset plugins. Um, these are all stock Reaper plugins, EQs, compressors, etc. cetera. Um, and this should be a good starting point for a lot of podcast mixing. And later I'll be doing a video about how to use this. There's sort of a system um, that I've developed for how to get podcasts to have the right loudness and um, make a, a smooth sounding mix using this template. So that's the Reatooled configuration. Um, I'll have more videos to come talking about how the system works and how I use it in my radio and podcast editing. Um, but for now, I will leave you to it and uh, enjoy the configuration.